lost in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon, there is a vine that is said to talk to humans, giving an understanding of the secrets of life. The custodians of this plant are the medicine men, or shamans, for the vine does not give up its secrets easily. I don't know if I have the strength for this path. The great 19th century palm house in the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew is a mecca for anyone interested in tropical plants. Piers Gibbon is an actor and voiceover artist who's also a keen amateur ethnobotanist. He's already collected one plant for the Royal Botanical Gardens, although he didn't have to go far to find this one. This is my baby. This is Salvia divinorum. It's a shamanic plant. It's used in Mexico. And I didn't have to go to Mexico to get it, however. It's a bit of a cheat because I found it growing very badly in a scientist's house in Hampstead Heath. I, don't, I haven't really earned the right to have my name on a plant label yet. But what I'd love to do is actually bring back one of the plants that Q doesn't have and put it in Q and have my name on the label saying, this is where I found it, this is what it does. The collection of living plants for study in the laboratory is an accepted tenet of Western botany. But Piers is no ordinary plant collector. What I'm interested in is a little backwater, which are the plants that speak to us, the plants that tell us what they're good for, the plants that actually have something to say directly to the person taking them. Have you ever had plants speak to you? I think so. I think I've had plants speaking to me, but I don't know the language they're speaking in. For peers, the botany of a plant is only half the story. To know it fully, you must experience its effects. Ever since he first discovered the talking plants, studying human sciences at university, he has experimented with the hallucinogenic flora. I don't feel it's a juvenile thing to do. I think it's a grown-up thing to do, to get to a place in your life where you feel blocked in some way and then go for an experience, whether it's skydiving, bungee jumping or taking ayahuasca that can help you get through that. British plants are one thing, but in the Amazon, they use Banisteriopsis carpi, or ayahuasca, for their therapy, and it is strong medicine. The bitter ayahuasca brew first makes its drinker violently sick, but it's in the fierce and often terrifying hallucinations that follow that the healing is said to lie. But ayahuasca doesn't work on its own. Rather, it acts as a key to unlock the psychotropic qualities of another plant, and it's this plant that Piers is after. Professor Sir Gillian Prance was until recently the director of Kew Gardens. This, it seems, is only one half of the ayahuasca brew, although it's called ayahuasca. Yes, very definitely. The other half is a shrub in the madder family called Psychotria viridis. Now, local people call it Chacrona, and it really doesn't work well unless you mix those leaves in with the brew of the vine of ayahuasca. Why doesn't you have the Chacrona? The Chacrona looks like almost any other small green bush in the forest, and so I think it probably has not been collected for that reason. It would be easy to get if you went out there with one of the shaman. They would take you straight to it, as they have many times. To find the Chacruna, Piers first needs to find a shaman to lead him to it. We, we got rid of our shamans 400 years ago. We burnt the witches. And yet, in other cultures, in Peru, they have these shamans still there. And I just have this feeling that if I could only learn from someone whose job it is to take people through these plant experiences, I could actually understand why I've been obsessed with the damn things for so long. I think it is dangerous to dabble in it and not go into it wholeheartedly as a few people have and really be apprentices. I also think that it can be rather dangerous if you're taking these things without uh, following the full instructions of the shaman. I've reached the end of the line with academia in this subject. I think I've read all the books that I can read on it. 
and it's so much easier to read about them than to actually take them and so much easier to talk about them than to actually sit down and drink a vile tasting liquid it's a dangerous journey I do recognize that you can't go into the ticket office and demand a return <laughs> First stop for Piers on his search for a shaman to help him unlock the secrets of Chacruna is the capital of Peruvian Amazonia, Iquitos. There's only one way to find the real thing when you're in a strange city, and that's to get out on the street. Fortunately, there's a thriving tourist industry here. Ayahuasca, have you heard of it? No. no. The most important thing is that you feel uh, much love. That's all. A small red word. <laughs> you became a tiger. After three nights of canvassing opinions on the boulevards and back streets of Iquitos, Piers has finally found what he's looking for. I think I found the right shaman to go with for my uh, entrance into the ayahuasca zone. And I love the fact that he's called Alan. Hi. You're Alan. Alan. Yes. Yeah. Nice to do. Thank you. This is my dog. <laughs> Fantastic. Actually, she doesn't bark. She only whistles. American facilitator Alan Shoemaker has been introducing tourists to the delights of ayahuasca for the past nine years. And it's really all about purge, 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 uh, every way you possibly can, right. getting phlegm out of your system. Okay. We, we, we cook all day. Uh, in the evening, we have the ceremony. We give you the medicine. Uh, sit back and it uh, takes about anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes before you start to feel the effects. And what you want to do is relax and get your ego out of the way as quickly as possible. In practical terms, I, I never quite understand how to let go of an ego. How would you explain that? How well, if you have a medicine that's strong enough, I think it won't make any difference. Okay. It, your ego will get out of the way. In the morning, you get up, we take our clothes off, I'll, I'll blow an astringent on you, and then uh, we use stinging nettles all over your body. All right. That again is purge, purge again. See, the, you build up toxins between the top two layers of your skin. So it'll puncture you in a million different places. Oh, great. So you're purging toxins. <laughs> I didn't know about the um, getting naked and beating with nettle thing. That's a new one on me. Uh, so, well, you don't have to do it. You could watch if you want to. Oh, Actually, no, you can I'm do not. me if you'd like. Oh, great. Come on, let's go. capacity as facilitator, Alan regularly takes groups of gringos into the jungle to take ayahuasca. It's not far into the jungle, just half an hour upriver from the Iquitos. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm excited, actually. I'm going to give myself permission not to be frightened. So we'll do the ceremony here in the center. That, that'll work good. And uh, use the outside perimeter to set up your sleeping area. Alan whistles a sacred song, or Icaro, whilst pulverizing the ayahuasca vine for tonight's brew. But unfortunately for Piers, he only uses dried chacruna leaves, so the plant collecting will have to wait. So these contain the DMT? Yeah. If you drank a glass of tea from the leaves without using vine, uh, you would feel no effects. So you have to combine it with the chemical that's in the ayahuasca vine. And you need both? Yeah, you have to have both. Okay. I began my studies in uh, Timbaco with a doctor from Vienna, Dr. Valentin Humphis. I drank with him and uh, projectile vomited over and over again. And when I finished, I, I could see lights around me. I raised up, and there weren't people around me at all. But in all the plants around me, there were spirits in the plants. And the smaller plants were children. And then the two directly in front of me 
were like this king and queen, incredible, and they were all glowing from the inside out. It's not a real hardcore in the middle of the jungle experience. This is jungle suburbia. Uh, we're only on the outside, you know, 30 minutes away from Iquitos. Um, but in terms of my first ayahuasca experience of the trip, I think it's an excellent way in. I can only hope that the peers will uh, get a better insight into the spiritual world and into the intuitive world and into the, into the grace and madness of this medicine. In some ways I'm in a real mess. No wife, no child. No home, no career. I want to be happy with what I've got. Get better at being me. I feel at home in my own head. Each participant in the ceremony drinks a cupful of the extremely bitter brew. As they wait for the effects, Alan whistles and beats his shakopa to both calm the initiates and help bring on their visions. <coughs> Last night was purging, and again this morning it's also followed by purging. And this is uh, mapacho tobacco juice that's been cooked down, so it's rather thick. <clears throat> Are you ready? Tilt your head back and do this. Yeah? Oh, that's excellent. Come on, man. It didn't feel crazy in California, and it felt more... It felt a bit... Like we were um, just seeing how many strange things we could do of a morning. I have a gift for you. Your own shakapa. If I were a shaman, I would have run the session differently. I feel that the ceremony needed more 
discipline. If I don't deal with what's been brought up, that could be scary. Searching for the Chakruna bush for Q and unsatisfied by his suburban ayahuasca experiences in Iquitos, Piers has teamed up with wilderness guide Richard Fowler, who learned his jungle skills with the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam. They're three days by boat from Iquitos and heading for a remote tribe of Matses Indians and the authentic ayahuasca tradition. I've been in Iquitos now for quite a while and I've spoken to the, the shamans that are connected with the city and for me it's not it's not working you cannot fly down here from your office in new york or england and get off the plane and go to somebody's house and do ayahuasca and have a natural spiritual connection with nature it's not going to happen you've got to come and get the rest of the medicine the rest of the medicine is here the heat the jungle the green the insects the plants the rain, the journey. Yeah. Richard is absolutely crucial. He's a, an expert in surviving and thriving in the jungle. He's my passport to get deeper into the mystery. At the Matzes village, Richard and Piers are meeting an American linguist who spent much of the past six years living here. Well, let's go see if we can find Dave. David Fleck has gone native. Here you go. How's it going? This is uh, yes, Piers. Good to meet you. David to Fleck. You. Great. resident anthropologist. <laughs> very, very resident. Very nice Later that night, they meet up with the village headman, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> when they hear your name, Pierce, it sounds like their word for tortoise, which is puche. Puche. And... And they consider like the tortoise is sort of the dumbest animal. Great. And in the midst, it's it's the dumb, dumb animal that always gets lost. That's me. That's me. That's why I'm here. I need to. That is exactly why I'm here. I need to know how not to get lost in the jungle and how not to get lost under the influence of mapacho and ayahuasca. Piers quizzes the chief about his tribe's use of forest medicines. So what he's saying is that they don't drink ayahuasca here. What they do have is uh, sapo. We say sapo, right? Their word for it is acate. 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 Acate is the matzah's word for it. It's frog poison. Uh, well, you have somebody burn you, right? Here, 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 or here. I was disappointed when I heard absolutely no ayahuasca here but they've got something else that's actually more unknown and more secret and this is the first time I've come across uh, a people using poison from a toad to contact the spirit world to get in there get some useful information for themselves and for the community it's an extraordinary opportunity the frog poison is only taken on hunting expeditions. The next day, Piers and Richard accompany David and the tribe to a remote hunting camp six hours' walk into the jungle. See how pretty it is? How, how uh, kind of iridescent in the light? Peruvian uh, rainbow boa. <laughs> Uh, he's a seeker, he's curious, he's, he's taking the steps, he's paying his dues, he's uh, making the sacrifice to come all the way here. Okay. I mean, this is the end, this is, uh, you, know, you know, we've arrived. You can't go any farther out than this or you're on your way back. I don't know him very well yet, and so I think uh, it will be interesting during this trip to see how he reacts to it and how he handles it. So this is home. Yep, for three days. Fantastic. 
And having just done a minimal amount of hiking through the jungle, I can survive, you know, I can do the walking about, getting completely soaked in sweat and getting here. But what I can't imagine yet is being able to be in the jungle, dealing with the snake, insects, wet, everything, and then hunting effectively. The frog whose poison the Matses use is most easily caught at night. They have the call that the Matses recognize very well, and now we're trying to hone in on its call by listening to it. Medusa bicolor. There's enough venom in this frog for about eight people. After a long day in the jungle, the Matses like to relax with a little tobacco. When your head starts hurting, just try to sit there and just try to dominate it and just take deep breaths. And when if you when it's fit, you know, to get the taste out. Mm. I've been here before. Time to extract the toxin from the frog. Oh, I'm Kermit the frog. They just hassle it a little bit, and then after they remove its toxin, they'll release it again, which is very unusual for matzes because usually they don't think twice about killing a frog or snake. Going into the jungle is a dangerous business, and so in some sense, if you're willing to put yourself through some pain voluntarily when you go into the forest, it seems something familiar, oh, yeah. something not, not so bad. And besides that, they do believe that it makes you less lazy, uh, more willing to go into your jungle and hunt rather than uh, lay in your hammock. That's the good stuff. I don't like torturing a frog. It looks pretty annoyed as well. I think I would be if I was stretched out having a stick up my bottom. That will be the next test for you. I'm doing it because I want to find out what happens. You know, quite simply, they say, well, if you're having bad luck as a hunter, you should take more sapo. And that really made me think about, well, you know, if I want to get uh, better at being myself and feel stronger wiser, chunkier, then that's also what I'm hoping for from supper. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night feeling really rough, and for a while there my body was giving me a really good excuse not to be supper, but uh, to my horror I woke up feeling great. To get the frog poison into the bloodstream, the Matses first burn through the barrier of the skin with a smouldering stick. The more burns, the stronger the dose. Piers and Richard opt for eight, and the rest of the tribe have only two more. It's all a bit macho, David. Sure, it's a bit macho. But what can you do? It's sort of a macho culture. The dried poison is mixed with the saliva of the tribe's best hunter and then smeared onto the open burns. The effects are fairly instantaneous. 
poison. Oh, you can tell it's a poison. Yes, sir. Oh, my heart. My heart is starting to beat. Doof, 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 doof. All of the things I'm coming across seem to be a lot about purging, a lot about vomiting. Take something in, heave it out again. And it seems to be something to do with heaving out, not just the poison that you've taken, but also getting rid of bad energies, generally uh, cleansing your system to make you stronger. Mr. Turd's wild ride. He just kicked my ass. After 25 minutes, the purging is almost over. The afternoon is spent in recovery, but the sapo has brought tensions to the surface. I think you're not the only person who comes to the rainforest saying that he wants to be a shaman. And I don't know you very well, but, but certainly some people come as, as an attempt to become an interesting person. And then I think some people really would like to become a shaman. And that is something that they really want to do more for themselves rather than... I have not made that absolute statement saying I want to be. I feel compelled to head in that direction because of many years experience back home. What you say you want seems like you kind of want to go halfway, sort of just, just probe at it a little bit, mm -hmm. but not really uh, get completely involved in if it. If that feels unimpressive, then I'll take that on my shoulders. But it's more honest than to say, I think I can become an Amazonian shaman. I don't. Despite Piers' protestations, he seems to be being sucked into the jungle. The next day, he joins Antonio on a hunt. But instead of a chase after fast-moving game, Antonio has found the burrow of an armadillo, a favorite delicacy for the Matses. The telltale growl means that the armadillo is at home, only nine feet below ground. Yeah, I'm observing and uh, pulling security. Yeah. <sighs> Once the hole is deep enough, the technique is to flood out the armadillo using almost waterproof leaf baskets. After six hours digging and water hefting, the effects of the sapo are wearing off. For some at least. I am ready to give up now. We can't get the burrow completely flooded because it's leaking into the groundwater. And so, I think it's you know, not much of a chance at this point. We've used all of the baskets, bags, cups, and apart from taking a leak in the water or emptying my boots, I can't see what else we can do. But I shall go down to the stream and help out. Why don't you just give up, please? Because uh, Antonio hasn't given up. Seems a bit me. <laughs> See, nobody's failed yet. <laughs> Aku! No mas agua! Bueno, bueno, Antonio! I, I came here and, and I was hoping I'd learn about ayahuasca and that didn't happen. I wasn't bothered because there was something else that they were saying, no, 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 this is extraordinary. And they have proved today to me that toad is extraordinary. To stick at that mindless task of hauling mud and then hauling water. It felt right. 
quite proud of myself. It was cool. I think I need to get back on track because they don't use ayahuasca here. The only way I can learn any more, I feel, is to go into some early stage of apprenticeship to just learn what it would take to end up in that direction. With the physical task, I, did, I think he did all right. I think he, he sort of uh, passed the test. Uh, with the psychological one, I think it's going to be a lot harder for him because I don't think he really knows what he's after right now. He's just somebody who likes to be in control of the situation. And when, when you have the, the trips that I took, I definitely felt that I was out of control. And so I think it will be very... Uh, uh, if he loses control, I think it will be very frightening for him. On the next step in his search for the Chakruna and its meaning, Piers has left the Matses and their frog poison 300 miles to the northeast and is heading for a rendezvous with Francoise Barbera Friedman, a Cambridge anthropologist and ayahuasca expert. David Fleck is hitching a lift on his way home to Texas. It's time to get back on track to find out more about ayahuasca. Francoise, the anthropologist from Cambridge, says this is the heart of ayahuasca country. This is where they know most about it, and she believes it's where it started. So that's where I'm headed. We got us a homemade raft, and we're shooting the rapids. We don't need none of them fancy blow-up uh, tourist rafts. It's kind of like Huckleberry Finn. If it was just going out to collect plants, that would be exhausting in itself, but you have to actually engage with it on a real level of actually putting yourself on the line and saying, OK, I'm the experiment. It does feel like quite an odyssey, quite a up against it expedition. Piers is meeting Francoise at the tambo of Shaman Don Guillermo. Don, Don Guillermo has been taking ayahuasca for 48 years. He's, he's a healer, shaman. He's what's called a palero, which, which is a specialist in bark medicine. As soon as they arrive, Don Guillermo diagnoses Piers by reading his pulses. David. His brain is weak and his body is a bit weak too. Mm -hmm. My brain is weak and my body is weak. Yeah. Francoise wants Piers to experience Don Guillermo's healing ayahuasca brew before taking him on to meet a more extreme shaman who has the reputation of a brujo or sorcerer. So he says that uh, I don't have any witchcraft on me. I mainly need sort of a cleansing out of my body. And he's going to uh, treat that with ayahuasca tonight. To cleanse both Piers and David, Don Guillermo spends the afternoon cooking up a fresh batch of ayahuasca, tailoring it to their needs with nine different plants and barks. Francoise has seen a lot of brews, like
Like Piers, she believes that only experience leads to full understanding, and she's been taking ayahuasca for 25 years. I cannot disbelieve that the plants talk to me because they do talk to me. And, and they talk to me in, in ways that make sense in my own life as well and have helped me to, to resolve some quite difficult issues in my life. It was very strange hearing Don Guillermo's diagnosis of David. I couldn't help myself hoping that he'd be weaker in the head and weaker in the body, but I suppose that was unlikely. The guy lives out in the jungle. <laughs> it's a strange little spike of jealousy there. <laughs> Oh, was it worth it? Yes. Because I allow myself to believe in it and go with everything. And I was rewarded with wood spirits. And at one point I was running naked through the forest. And I came across those wood spirits. The same ones. And they attacked me. And tore me limb from limb. Fairly mild. I think unless Piers has a very intense ayahuasca session that really shakes him up, he's just going to go through and have a, a mediocre experience and then uh, go back to England and act like it was a very profound experience. Next morning, Francoise and Piers set off on the seven hour track to Don Demetrio the sorcerer shaman who she believes will truly open Piers' mind. David is returning to the relative sanity of Texas. When you take very strong brew, that makes you lose touch with your ego. For me, it was a liberation. If I had had only Don Guillermo's brew, I think I would never have experienced that. Unlike gentle Don Guillermo, Don Demetrio uses every trick in the book during his ayahuasca sessions. Blindfolded, he uses the ayahuasca to see into Piers' body and mind, and then summons up his spirit helpers to give Piers his visions. Flores, perfumes, guacamayos, osos, leones, boas, las visiones, en visiones, en película, en película. Les va mirando, les va conociendo a ustedes, hombres fuertes, quienes han sacado la medicina andina en la selva. After two nights of this treatment, the plants finally talk to Piers. He receives his own Icaro from the jungle. In the sweaty head, there is a tune of mine that came to me tonight, and I played it for the first time. And he commanded me to play the Arco. And I was sitting there with my head in my hands, unable to move. And he said, play. played my instrument and the tune rang out and the birds started singing back. This is acting, this is not him. The feelings were real, I could, I could hear his sobbing in his back and, and... But then, that's what he makes out of it, that makes me angry. I just can't. 
I just can't relate to this guy at all. Este Pedrito ha sido un hijo bien mimado de padre y madre porque él, el doctor. De Don Demetrio Cispiez is what you could, in a word, describe as a spoiled brat, as as a boy who's had everything from from the cradle, and then he's grown up and he didn't have something to fight for, and that has been a deprivation that Piez is paying the price for now. So now he's looking for his challenge, he's looking for what makes life worth living. Despite Francois's misgivings, Don Demetrio thinks Piers can be helped. He just needs to be pushed a little harder. During the time spent under the influence of ayahuasca, all of the rest of these experiences have made me realize that the reason I came here was to get healed. And I didn't even know I was sick. Don Demetrio has prescribed three days of solitude and ayahuasca in a shelter an hour away. So this is where you're going to hopefully catch your, your own vision, yeah. on your own, <laughs> in the forest. Okay. So I take ayahuasca and then as soon as I've drunk it, I've, you, you, you go? Yes. The night is going to fall and then it's, it's between you and the forest. And you don't think you're going to cack your pants in the forest on your own? I might well be very scared tonight. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the whole thing. It's to be enjoyed. Okay. All right. Rain come down and rain protects me. Pedro Gibbon all along. Three days later, Don Dimitro and Francois come to check on his progress. Dimitrio's ayahuasca is very, very strong and it has placed peers in a situation in which there's no more boundary between observing and healing himself. In Demetrius' eyes, he's already uh, a potential shaman. Piers is responding well to the ayahuasca and solitude, but Don Demetrio wants to ensure that the benefits stay with him for the rest of his life. He wants to give Piers his own personal defense, or yachai, this is contained in Don Demetrio's phlegm. The shaman's phlegm is, is a mucousy substance that strong shamans extract from their stomach in which they keep their magic darts and the little animals alive which embody their power and their defenses. I got phlegm in order to to just prove to myself and to others that it was a, a complete gimmick. But I found to my surprise that, that it did mean something and that once I had this substance in my body, I, I was caught in the system. Perhaps as a reward for his progress, Don Demetrio takes Piers to find a chukruna bush for Kew Gardens. Today I'll be collecting something in the field and that feels like a real achievement. I've put a little tick in the margin that is important to me and I believe is important for Western science as well. This is the one to collect. I have you know, no other need to see any other because this is the one that I've been drinking. 
It already has a scientific name, and I will just have a little cryptic note at the bottom of the label that will say G-I-P-I, -I, for Gibbon Piers. Piers Gibbon collected this, and no one else will know what that's about, but it'll make me very proud. With the Chakruna in the bag, Piers' mission is complete. But there is still the phlegm. If he chooses to take it, he will be bound to Don Demetrio forever. It's like giving you a bit of your personal, your own defense. Yes. And it's, it's highly significant. I, I worry that to take this path is a serious one, and I worry that to do it because it fits with the timing of the film is wrong. Um, he, he would feel more comfortable, okay. and I, I'm just, I think you can trust him. This is your decision, not our decision. Mm. Você deve pensar bonito, deve pensar bem você com cinco sentidos. You've got to think with all your five senses whether you really want to do this or not. Mm. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Wairata apainai kuna yura yura ikainari. Causa, causa, maririni, yai, kuri, mui, kainai, ni. Adentro, abre la boca. Why do I feel so strong now? Why don't I feel sick? I do not understand this. I have drunk a cup full of ayahuasca. I should be feeling vile. Maybe I've crossed some line of belief. Maybe spending so many nights alone in the forest, so many nights drinking ayahuasca, that no matter how scientific and objective I think I am during the daytime, I've completely lost the plot. Or maybe I've just found it. Don't forget, Piers Gibbon will be chatting about his jungle experience in a few minutes at channel4.com forward slash talk. <laughs>